Hi there. I can see you, but I'm afraid you can't see me, because I'm what you call a ghost. Unfortunately, I'm not a very clever ghost, as I can't get the hang of making myself visible to the living, although I can make myself heard. The people upstairs have allowed me to return to visit my old haunts. Forgive the pun, it was unintended. I'm reliably informed that all the places I used to know exist at a museum called Beamish, and so I've arranged a peer visit. While I'm here, I invite you all to share my memories as I look around, invisible of course. Hello again. I'm glad you joined me. What better way to start our tour than to take a look at my old school? This young lady from Liverpool, she's come to have another trip around uh, the Beamish Museum. It's a lot of years since we were here, and we're uh, still trying to find our bearing. But we're, just, we're not going down the pit or anything like that. We're just going to the town in the, in the Collie Village. Is that right, and do you think it's a good idea to preserve all the old times? Oh, definitely, definitely. It's good for the school children that's out on a trip well, today. It's mm. good for, for me. There's no doubt this is my old school. In my day, teachers ruled the classroom with the aid of a cane, which they frequently used to wrap the knuckles of misbehaving pupils. They also used wooden blackboard dusters to throw at students who they thought were being inattentive. The lift-up tops of these desks were often used by pupils as a shield against missiles thrown at them by the angry teachers. That means getting up at six in the morning, probably not finishing work until eight o'clock in the evening. They might have given you a weekend off once a month, but mainly the children went home the month, always went to the night. You could leave school at 12, so notice uh, in the corridor. If you wanted to leave school at 12, you had to apply to the headmaster and you would take that, you would if you were a bright boy, you could leave school. For the boys who didn't pass that, they could still leave school if they could prove that they'd been a good attendant. The school provided storage space for hoops whilst the owners were in the classroom. This is handy, the chapel is next door to the school. Most of the kids I knew had to attend Sunday school, where the teacher often told a biblical story with the aid of picture slides shown by a giant projector which was called a magic lantern. As we all got a cup of tea and a biscuit, we kids thought it was all worthwhile. My grandparents lived in a cottage like these, and I spent many a happy hour with them. Locking the front door was unknown, and burglaries were very rare. The women were very proud of the way they kept their homes, clean and tidy. They also took great pains to bring up their children to be honest and well-mannered, and most of us turned out that way. The backyard was where all the washing hardware was stored, tin bars, mangles and the like, and the whole family had a wash in the tin bath in front of the fire. Many a time they used the same water as well. Yeah. 
Watching this lady making a proggy mat, or sometimes called a clippy mat, reminds me that my grandmother used to make mats the same way, using old rags, and sometimes she used granddad's clothes before he'd finished with them, much to his annoyance. The cooperative store was the only shop that some people used, mainly because at the end of the year a sizable dividend could be had, and that certainly helped to make Christmas more cheerful. On Saturdays, I and most of my pals ran errands for relatives and earned a few coppers. That's the word for the old penny. With this fortune, we treat ourselves to a tram ride to the local fairground. I remember riding on such a bone shaker which came down Sheriff Hill Gateshead at what seemed a very fast speed. It felt that if you got on with a pint of milk, you could get off with a pound of butter. It's nice to hear the fairground organ again, with the kids enjoying the rides. Where I'm from, you get sick of listening to harps all day. I notice that the prices have changed a bit though. No longer is it the harpney on the swings or a penny on the gallopers. Many a time I was taken on holiday by a steam train and sometimes the very fact that I was on a train was more exciting than the holiday. The holiday was usually a day trip to Whitley Bay. Well, all this reminds me that I have to go back. Thanks for your company, and I look forward to meeting you at my place, but not too soon, I hope. Cheerio!